bread in America sucks. Pun, pun intended. The prevalence of abstinence only, non-comprehensive, heteronormative sex education is not doing us any favors. Only 22 states in the US mandate that sex ed be taught in schools. And only 13 of those require that the information be medically accurate. <laughs> only the state of California mandates that consent be taught in high school sex ed. So it's really no wonder that the US has the highest teen birth rate of any developed nation, the highest rates of curable STDs of any developed nation and some developing ones, and tragically, one million rapes annually. It seems like what we've been doing is focusing more on scare tactics and fear mongering than on actually teaching facts, empowerment, healthy relationships, and communication. Basically, we've been taking a book out of the page of Coach Carr from the famous early 2000s movie Mean Girls when he infamously said, don't have sex because you will get pregnant and die. So what should we be doing differently then? We should be teaching four things. Number one, contraception. Number two, consent. Number three, inclusivity. And number four, pleasure. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about pleasure. So number one, contraception. We need to make condoms and birth control free and accessible to teenagers. <laughs> and we need to make sure that they know how to properly use them. Because contrary to popular belief, having more teens with contraception doesn't mean that more teens will be having sex. It means that more teens will be having protected sex. That's what we want. <laughs> Number two is consent. We need to be teaching what consent is and what it is not. How to ask for consent. How to give consent. And what a healthy relationship does and does not look like. And as part of teaching consent, we need to teach what slut shaming and victim blaming look like so as to combat, combat a rape culture that all too often places the blame on victims of sexual assault rather than perpetrators. <laughs> Number three is inclusivity. Teaching inclusively means recognizing LGBTQIA folks, gender, sexual trauma, illness and disability, and culture when talking about sex. So that means that sex ed is not comprehensive if it fails to meet the needs of people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, or who otherwise fall outside the gender binary. This means normalizing that, shocker, not all sex is procreative. And that doesn't mean that all sex should not be safe. This means normalizing that not every man has a penis, and not everyone who has a penis is a man. This also means normalizing female sexual arousal and acknowledging its difference from men's and establishing that vaginal intercourse is merely one type of sex, not the definition of it. This also means recognizing that some in the classroom may have experienced sexual or relationship violence or that some who are differently abled, mentally or physically, may still want and be able to have active, healthy sex lives. This also means recognizing the role that culture plays in creating differing norms and expectations around sex. So while one student may have learned their expectations about sex from porn, unfortunately, another may have learned theirs from church, probably also unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and the last part is pleasure, yay! Sex ed should acknowledge the radical notion that pleasure is indeed a part of sex. And that shame should not be, especially for women. This means normalizing that for people with clitorises and vaginas, um, vaginal intercourse without clitoral stimulation is unlikely to be sexually satisfying. Yeah, she knows, she knows. And uh, the clitoris is the only part of the human body that exists solely for pleasure. This also means normalizing not only male and female masturbation, but encouraging students to explore their own bodies and preferences prior to becoming sexually active with partners. So sex ed in America is pretty fundamentally broken, um, but we can help change it. The only downside to that is that awkward five minute conversation you're planning on having with the young person in your life, it might need to be a bit longer. Thanks. Yeah.